Brigham, president of America Speaks. Started there 12 years ago, 2001. Was the second full-time employee after Carolyn Lukensmeyer, who was our founder back in 1995. America Speaks' core mission is to engage citizens in the decisions that impact their lives. We've been able to demonstrate that at just about every level. So we've done that at the small community level, at the city level, at the county level, the regional level, the state level, the national level. And then we've done a bunch of international work uh, that's been, uh, you know, UK, Australia, but also we've done multinational work, especially kind of EU based. And what we're known for is something called the 21st Century Town Meeting, which is a methodology that allows us to take democracy to scale. The largest meeting that we've ever done is 5,000 people in a single site, but we've also done about 4,000 people across 55, 60 sites. And the core to the model is tables of 10 people, a wide range of ages, wide range of incomes, ethnicities, facilitated by volunteer experienced facilitators, laptop computer on every table, wireless polling keypad in every person's hand. And it's the ability to facilitate discussions happening simultaneously across a very large group, being able to synthesize all the information being generated by each table, and then being able to turn that around to citizens with a set of themes that they can then prioritize right then and there. So over the course of a meeting, we can cycle through five very substantive discussions, and decision makers are able to understand what the priority recommendations are that citizens as a collective have generated over the course of a day. So that's mainly what we're known for. The aspiration for us has always been to try and impact at a national level. One of our earliest projects was on social security reform, uh, where we engaged about 40,000 people over the course of a year and a half. We also did a process on America's fiscal situation two years ago, where we engaged 4,000 people uh, on a big national issue and brought our findings to a, a national commission. By and large, most of our work has come from our track record and word of mouth. But in 2002, we actively sought to do work up in New York around the aftermath of 9-11 and the rebuilding of Lower Manhattan. And over the course of time, we were able to position ourselves to do what at that point was the largest scale meeting that we'd ever done before. When the planning process in the aftermath of Katrina down in New Orleans had gotten so dysfunctional, we were able to position ourselves over time to help write that process and engage citizens in a way that was credible to the decision makers and to help finally get a plan approved that enabled them to have access, the city to have access to rebuilding and recovery funds from uh, the federal government. One of our challenges has been we're known for doing large scale and so when people think of us they think about doing large scale. Uh, and we're still going to maintain the capability of doing things at large scale. But, you know, the vast majority of communities, cities, regions are only going to be able to really uh, afford or be able to pull off something on a much smaller scale. So, I mean, the great thing about our model is that you can scale it up and you can scale it down. So we've done meetings recently where we use the same exact process for a 3,000-person meeting for a 40-person meeting. We've had a lot of success over the last decade, but especially the last three or four years in the Washington, D.C. region. So one of our focuses is really going to be how to serve that whole region much more effectively in terms of convening deliberations, partnering with uh, agencies, city, county, region-wide, to uh, you know, make sure that citizen voices are really heard on a wide range of important issues in the region. A uh, second area that we're looking to focus on is in the arena of land use planning and transportation because probably more than any kind of agencies anywhere in the country, those kinds of agencies are either required or feel obligated to do public engagement on a regular basis. The vast majority of that is not very effective and we really feel like uh, because there's that market there that it's a place where we can really make a greater impact. We've done a lot of work with planning agencies over the last decade but I'm looking to have us focus more explicitly on those kind of markets to see if we can have a much uh, more demonstrable effect on land use planning and transportation in various parts of the country. Core to our work going forward will be the basic methodology, but we're also looking at kind of what are the other range of services that are needed in these kinds of engagements and in these kinds of jurisdictions. So whether it's just strategic consulting or whether it's smaller scale, non-technology enabled meetings, just great meeting design, great facilitation. 
whether it's online uh, tools and platforms that can really kind of meet the need of a particular public agency. So we're really looking at kind of what's the wider range of services that's affordable and at the same time effective for public officials. It's pretty difficult to convince folks. I mean, in general, I would say that a lot of the public leaders that we've worked with had an openness to this, at the very least, or some previous somewhat comparable experience. But I, I would also say one of the most important things that we have discovered over the last 10, 12 years is that people really need to see it to believe it. So what we began doing starting 10 years ago was if there was at least some inkling of interest from public officials, we would invite them to what we called a behind the scenes program where they could go to another city, county, what have you, and they could actually see this being conducted with 300, 500, 1,000 citizens. And once they had that experience, it, it, it kind of reached that critical threshold where they said, oh, I can see us doing this. I now get how it actually works. But it's harder to explain. It really has to, in a lot of ways, be seen to be believed at the scale that we do it. My vision of a healthy democracy is that we're seeing public deliberation happening on a wide range of issues, whether it's local, regional, or, or national. And I think, especially at national, it's going to have to be opportunistic. I don't think there's uh, kind of a ready-made audience for it right now. But I also believe healthy democracy has to be very much at the local and regional level where uh, kind of the most immediate, the most urgent issues often are happening much closer to home and where people are much more likely to get engaged, stay engaged if they have a, a positive experience. It's hard to recruit people to any kind of public meeting, but if they have a good experience, they're much more likely to get hooked because they can see their voice happening much more directly on a particular plan that's happening locally or a particular set of issues that are directly impacting their, their community or uh, you know, their local lives. Ultimately, I'm an optimist. I believe we really are in a quagmire right now that is gonna take a lot of creativity and innovation to get out of. I do believe that the work that is done in the dialogue and deliberation community um, is slowly gaining traction. There's a lot more work being done, a lot more uh, results being demonstrated, a lot more public officials that I believe realize the need for this, even if they're not quite sure how to orchestrate it. And I would say that's more true at the local uh, and regional level than it is at the national level. You know, I think the solutions with regard to a healthy democracy, they're gonna have to be many. They're gonna have to grow over time. There's gonna be a lot of uh, stuff that gets tried and doesn't work, as well as a lot of stuff that gets tried and does work and gets built upon over time. And I think the hardest nut to crack is gonna be changing the climate at the national level. And that's gonna take more than just good dialogue and deliberation. I think it's really gonna to have to be taking a step back and rethinking you know, how we do elections, how we think about parties, what is the role of government, what is the role of citizen, uh, ask and answer those hard questions over a decade or more until we can figure out something that works with a much greater effectiveness.